You know, I was I was listening to that 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 verse and it says I will build my life upon your love for it is a firm foundation. The reality is when it talks when that song says that the word love there is speaking of his word. Cuz that's the only thing that lasts. That's the only thing that lasts. And when we live our life by that word we won't be shaken. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew that the winds will come and the rains will come. It'll beat upon the house, but it shall not fall. I praise God for our forget wrapped and for our pastors who have been teaching us not just what the word says, but how to walk it out from day to day. Because there are a lot of people who get up here and they preach revelation. And they have a lot of head knowledge, but they don't know how to go home and love their wives. They don't know how to go home and love their children. They don't know how to go and hang out with one another and do life together. They don't know how to take that word and really live on it. Because when we do that, that's when we are able to stand the test of time. So Father, we just right now just thank you and we declare that we will build our our lives upon your love the birth the life the death and the resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this is what we stand on not on opinion not on what we feel not on past circumstances but we build it upon the truth of your word and your love. And we thank you, Father, that as we do that, God, we will be victorious. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God a big hand clap of praise. Slap somebody a high five, do an elbow, do whatever you do, chunk the deuce, whatever you got to do. Chunk the deuce. Tell somebody God is good. Let's do the Baptist church thing. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Y'all messed it up, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Our our panel, come on up. Panel, come on up. Hey, we got this this cool panel that's coming up, and I want y'all to see how we got them sitting down now. Check this out. We coordinated. Y'all ever remember Boomerang? Where he opened up the vest and said, we coordinated? Well, we didn't have on the same coat clothes, but what we did is black, white, black, white. <laughs> Book ends, little ends. All right, y'all go ahead and sit down. We, uh, uh, well, not white, yeah. Somebody said, I know he ain't called them white. <laughs> that is so cool, that is so cool. Well, we... Uh, as you can tell, as my wife said last week, I am not uh, Pastor Juan Martinez, <laughs> and I didn't get to get the shoe game like they did, but that's all right. I'm going to be all right today. Uh, we just want to just show some love to uh, Pastor Juan and Pastor Ruthie Martinez, the angels of this house, incredible, incredible leaders, incredible visionaries, um, and just uh, what they are doing. Right now, they are on the road, um, making Christ known by the way we love everywhere they go. So, excuse me, I shouldn't have ate a candy. Um, but in that, they're on the road, they're traveling, so we ask that you keep them in, uh, in prayer. This week, the uh, office is going to be closed because one of the things that I just love about Pastor, we've been here for right at about a year, uh, about a year and um, we have constantly, Pastor uh, Juan, Pastor Ruth, they are constantly sewing into us. So we're taking some of the office, and we're going for training this week uh, at Gateway. And so we ask that you all be keeping us in your prayers so we can come back refreshed on next Sunday, ready to uh, just sow into you and to love on you and be a blessing to you. Amen. So let's keep them in prayer and keep them lifted. Um, we're also excited about hangouts that are going on right now. 
uh, incredible, incredible uh, all around the board from the uh, after school, after school, after church, <laughs> uh, our uh, volunteer of the, of the month has his across the street. Awesome. I ain't going to call out. We got, men, we got men's workshops going on. We got uh, marriage workshops going on. Uh, we got all kind of stuff. If you need a, a list of them, go on the app and on, on the talk to Miss Michelle over here. She can point you in the right direction. Y'all give Miss Michelle some love. She is doing an incredible, incredible, incredible job, and she is the one that takes care of me at, uh, at the office. So, so we are excited today because we are the second half of the panel. Uh, last week, y'all had all, all women. This week, that was great. My wife, you sexy thing, you... Huh, focus, focus, okay. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> I lost it for just a minute. I'm serious, I'm sorry. She looked good, though. She looked good, I'm telling you. When she was over there jumping around, I almost lost myself, but that's all right. Um, focus, what was I about to say? Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we had the female version of the panel up here last week. They did an incredible job. We already decided in the back, we're not going to try to live up to what they did last week. We're just going to be us and uh, let it all hang out and, and pray that God blesses y'all. Uh, but no, our guys are going to do an incredible job. Um, uh, to my uh, immediate left, uh, we have uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jonathan Martinez. Amen. Uh, single man on the panel. Y'all pray for him. Um, next to him, uh, we have uh, the other man, myth and legend, uh, Mr. James McCollum. Amen. Uh, married for, no, you said 17 or 18? 17. 17. Make sure you get it right because you, <laughs> you have to answer that. Over there, and then we have the big O, the number one, the big kahuna, <laughs> uh, Mr. Oscar Romero. He is the man been married just uh, last week, a year. Ooh! And I know I'm not supposed to tell anything that uh, we talk about in private, but Oscar would say to me yesterday, he might say it on the panel today, he said, when I, was praying, when I was praying and giving my life to Christ, I said, Lord, please send me a, a God-fearing woman. And if you don't mind, let her look a little good, too. <laughs> I said, well, go ahead. The Lord shall do answer prayer, don't he? Amen. They've been married, married a year. And uh, myself, I make 19 years this April 26th. That's right focus. Okay, here we go. So this is uh, Let's Talk, um, uh, Love Wins, Man Edition, and today we're going to be talking about roles and uh, communication, uh, not just in our, as Jonathan pointed out in the back, we're not just with our spouses or significant others, we're going to be talking about it, communication with our brothers and our, excuse me, my sisters our children, uh, just communication all, of, all up and down the board, and um, hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. I want to put up Amos uh, 3 right quick, and I want to just give you a nugget that I just thought was so, so incredible this morning. Amos 3 says, can two people walk together lest they agree, or they have the same direction, agreeing on the same direction? And you know what I found out this morning when I looked, when I looked that word up, the word agreement? In the original word is the word yadad, Y-A-A-D. And that word yadad in the Hebrew means a fixed point of assembly. And so what came to me, how, how many of you have ever heard the, the, the statement, if we make a plan, if something happens at the house, the house catches on, catches on fire, everybody get out the house, and then they, they go to a fixed point. 
or go to the neighbor's house and everybody will meet up there. Has everybody, anybody ever heard that as a plan before? Well, this is what God is saying in Amos chapter 3, that how can two walk together lest they have a fixed point of agreement? Whenever there is dissension, whenever there is fire, whenever there is struggle in the house, there's a fixed point in the word of God that we ought to run to. And so the word becomes the central point of our salvation. When we get out of the, to come out of the negativity, we don't run to our opinions, we don't run to what we think, we don't run to our offense, we run to what the word of God has said about that situation, and we put our lives, like the song says, on that firm word, that love, because it is a firm foundation and it will not allow us to be shaken. Amen? So in this, as we look at this whole thing of love, I just want to, we're going to turn it over to the panel now, and we're going to talk about our biblical roles as men as it relates to how we relate to our, our wives, how we relate to our significant others, how we relate to our friends, uh, how we relate to the people in our lives. And when we study John 15, we study 1 Corinthians 13, the, the whole scripture on love, and Ephesians 5, where it talks about a man should lay down his life for his wife or be willing to lay down his life for a wife, we realize that love is a sacrificial thing, right? That we are to die to self. And so how do you, how do you as, how do we as men, in your context, as a single, as a man that's been married for 18 years and one is one, how do you see sacrifice, dying to yourself and loving to com- loving to live out that relationship with, with, with others. I guess I'll go first. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, for the longest time, right, so I've, I've, I know good and I know evil, right? Mm-hmm. And so for me, what, what does it is, is for the longest time, I didn't know that I could actually um, not be led by my emotions. Mm-hmm. My emotions kind of like dictated what I was going to say I was going to speak to someone, Mm -hmm. I was going to treat them, just everything, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, man, it wasn't that long ago till I started realizing that um, when things happen to me, Mm -hmm. I have the choice to be able to dictate my behavior Mm -hmm. toward whatever is happening, whether it's my friend coming at Mm -hmm. me wrong, whether it's somebody stealing from me, somebody talking to me crazy, Mm -hmm. you know? whether it's forgiving, mm-hmm. I have that option. And so for me, what love wins, man, it's just being able to choose to be kind in times when my emotions and that little voice says, treat them wrong, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So just being able to, to apply the word in those times where I don't feel like So it. choosing the voice that you actually listen to. Because the, yeah. Paul said, you know, I'm betwixt between two mm-hmm. things. The thing I want to do, I find myself doing, and the thing I don't want to do, I find myself not doing. And so here it is. We have this thing that, that pulls us from one to the next, and we have to choose on each opportunity to put God's perspective first, yeah, right? So I guess I kind of look at it, what's better for this? Sometimes I look at it as a business. What is the best choice for this business to keep growing and for us to have the commune? Or the, what's the best choice for this? Whatever it is, relationship, you know, yeah. relationship, you mm-hmm. know, but the goal of it, you know, I, I, what's the best choice right now, how to treat my client so mm-hmm. we can continue with this friendship, we continue with this relationship, you know what I mean? Most definitely, most definitely. What about you, Jane? So, I guess for me, I, you know, my parents have been married for 50 years, mm-hmm. so, and they've been amazing parents, you know, and obviously what we're talking about is love, and with my father, I saw him give that, you know, unconditional love to my mom and really laying down everything to him. So for me, it's kind of like everything that we deal with, that practice. I got to see him do that in practice. So for me, when it came to, you know, you know, laying down my life to my wife, it was kind of easy. But at the same time, you know, there there are moments where it's like, hey, this is my thing. I want to do this and that. Mm -hmm. You, You get that voice you know, even though you know what the right thing is. So for me, I've always thought, hey, this is kind of easy, but you got to go to God to really get you fully right mm-hmm. on that, you know. So so most, most importantly is the relationship with God 
yeah. and the relationship you saw with your father, yeah. with your mother, and now you're able to live that out. Yes. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. That's cool. What about you, Oscar? Hand them another one. Get them yours. So for me, uh, it's just like Jonathan said, you know, uh, for me it wasn't, you know, laying down my life and I guess uh, it was just, uh, it was, it was, uh, at first it was, you know, it was hard, you know, uh, but, um, as I came to God, you know, like, you know, just basically what, it's the same thing, you know, I just, I had to, you know, recognize all that love that, uh, you know, whenever, whenever I didn't deserve it, you know, how, you know, how God loved you. Yeah. How God loved me, you know, when I didn't deserve it, I didn't, uh, recognizing and, uh, removing all that uh everything that was destroying my life you know um mm -hmm. recognizing everything that was destroying my life and replacing it with god's love you know and uh, replacing it with god's love and uh but it wasn't about me anymore you know so it was, it, it was interesting because I'm, I'm gonna throw in our, some of our conversation yesterday because you you gave a incredible moment where you talked about the moment that the Holy Spirit came over you and you were rebelling at a at a men's home and all of a sudden this spirit, the presence of God came over you and after a month of rebelling, you found yourself in this moment where you just could not stop crying because you knew that the Holy Spirit had shown up in that moment. So what changed from that moment to now? Because obviously I see a difference in you from the time you first came here or uh, first time, first time I came here. So, what do you feel is the difference in you now? How, what happened in that moment to make you, to to help you transition and begin to walk out this life of faith? Well, what helped me was uh, getting, just getting close. To that, man, you're good. Just getting closer to God, like you know, every day coming to Him. You know, every day coming mm -hmm. to Him. And uh, mm -hmm. basically base putting my wife's, and every, not just my wife, you know, putting my loved one's needs before mine, you know? Most definitely. And, uh, That's good. You know, just I had to practice it, you know? It, was just, it wasn't easy for me. Most definitely. That's, that's so good because the reality is, the reality is that, that so many times in relationships, we come with selfish motives. And it's all about us and all about us. And the Bible says this is how God displayed his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, sinners, Christ died. So the process of us building relationships is always this process in becoming more like Christ, where we literally lay down ourselves and seek other people's interests over, over, our, over ourselves. Amen? So here is, here's, here's the next question for you. Uh, as it relates to, I know that you say you didn't meet Pastor Juan until you were 21. 21. Yeah. You said you didn't meet your father until you were 18. 18. You, your, your father was in the house and a strong figure, even though my father was in the house and it was a very strong figure because we were so much alike. We bumped heads on every, and he was a strong disciplinarian, so I didn't really, I didn't really want to talk a lot to him at that time. So how would you say that the, your relationship with your father or your lack of relationship with your father hindered or helped you then and now as it relates to how you saw God? For me, it was, uh, it's actually the opposite. So my relationship with God then dictated my relationship with my father. Because so I met my dad before I met God, okay. or at least started following God. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, for the longest time, it was like, oh, we're having a good time, but there wasn't true forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Because forgiveness is choosing daily to say, I'm not gonna hold what he did against me. Now I'm not gonna have to endure being alone and having to go through all these troubles. Now I have to choose every day to say, hey man, I love you. Even though right now I really don't wanna say that because I feel hurt that now I'm 29 mm -hmm. and there's still a child that's mm -hmm. void. You know, mm -hmm. they're void inside of my heart, you mm -hmm. know? 
of the human perspective. You yeah. Know? And so it's, um, it's, it's I have to choose to love him every day because there's going to be instances in my life where I'm going to feel like, man, he should have been there. Yeah. Right. And so then I can take bitter that root of bitterness that has already been there mm -hmm. for so long and choose and, to and eat choose on it. Yeah. To be yeah. like, ah, how could you? Yeah. Or I can say, man, it's OK because God's got me. Yeah. It's OK yeah. because you're a good dad now. You know, you love me. You, yeah. you know. Yeah, like yeah. I could call my dad in my worst moment, and he will. I know that he will drop whatever he's doing. Most I definitely. know he will drop whatever he's doing to come to my rescue. Okay, um, for the answer, how is that now that you see your dad in this new light, and you see what he has become versus what he was? How does that now affect how you see God and how you relate to God? Because you now know a father who is 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 loving and is careful. And you know that he will run to you when you need it. So now when you see your, see father, your daddy God, do you reflect on it in the same way? I do. I okay. do. Because I actually get to see, and obviously God's love is even greater. You yeah. Know? So yeah. I get to see how he loves me and how he thinks about me. You know, he's like, hey, man, maybe, you know, all these things to where it just, I know that God loves me. Like sometimes I go as far as, man, God loves me so much that he put my dad on a platform just so I could be there. Yeah. Just so I could be there. And that's how much God loves me, you know? And so yeah. the, I get to see it because he's like, hey, son, come over here with me. Hey, let's go to Gateway. Let's do all this stuff. I'm going to take you with me everywhere. Wow. And it's, it's the love that God has for me because he's like, I want to take you everywhere. Wow. wow. That is so good. That's so good. And, and you said to me, you said to me, Oscar, you said to me last the other, uh, last week, you told me how now your father is one of your heroes and, and how you really look up to him, uh, especially from a spiritual aspect. So how does now that your relationship has changed with your dad, does that help you see God differently than you saw him before you met Jesus? Yeah, um, I see the way I see God, you know, the way I see my dad now, it's, I mean, my dude, like, I met my dad first. I didn't give my life to Christ till mm -hmm. a little over two years now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I see my, you know, I see him differently. You know, I said, of course, you know, he's now, now we have a better relationship. Cool. And, uh, yeah, we just have a better relationship. You know, the way me and him, you know, we talk all the time. And before, I didn't, you know, I didn't look for him. I didn't, you know, it was just, I guess, I guess, you know, my past, you know, uh, the way I thought about it, you know, it was just, I was like, man, he didn't look for me back then, you know, I was, I was bitter, I was, you know, I had that, that anger in me, you know, I, and I didn't even know, because when I wanted, when I, when he actually looked for me, I, act, I wanted to, I was interested in getting to know him, you know, but at the same, little did I know that I had so much, you know, that anger in me. Yeah. And I, like when they, when when he actually asked me this one time in front of a uh, Pastor Juan, he asked me to forgive him. And it was one of those moments that like I was I didn't know I had that anger in me. You know, I just man, it was like it's like when you pop a pimple. That's the way Pastor Juan put it. <laughs> when he, when he when he told me, hey, son, forgive me. It's like if you pop that pimple, man. It started like, like started crying. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like crazy, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I mean, and, you know, I still, like, you know, I, s I guess, you know, uh, no, I, I forgive him. You know, everything is good between me and my dad. I, I cool. love him, you know? I, I, and then I feel that uh, through him, God got me close. You know, it, it was, it's a long story. No, you but, uh, but the way, like, you know, I was in jail and I came to him and I asked him and, you know, I asked my dad to, uh, you know, I, I wanted to get out of, you know, for me, Bronzeville, I'm from Bronzeville, Texas. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was my bondage. So, like, you know, I was everything, you know, I just wanted to get away from all of that. So, I, you know, I wanted to come over here, but Ben Comstack told my dad that he told him about this men's home. And I went, anyway, no, you good? God, God, God used my dad, you know, to my dad, you know, and so... That's, the, that's, the, that's when I, you know, when I gave my life to Christ, January 28th, 2020. Cool. And after that, and then af after that, you know, it was like I started seeing things differently. I started, you know, I, wanting to forgive, you know, like, 
or ask for forgiveness, you know, and forgive people. You know, like, you know, I was just back, back then, I was just, you know, self-centered, you know, selfish, prideful, you know, I'm, wanting to be, you know, no one's going to mess with me, you know, just putting up that front, you know, yeah. that was a tough guy. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it was a front. I believe nobody was going to mess with you. <laughs> I don't believe nobody was going to mess with you, man. <laughs> I don't believe that was a front. I believe everybody was like, leave him alone. Leave him alone. But that's cool, man. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm going I'm to give you another question because I'm going to let you start off because everybody up here, uh, at least us three, we, we, we're married. Uh, are in relationships with very strong-willed women. I oh say Lord. that in the most <laughs> subtle way without getting a look. Is my wife looking at me right now? <laughs> oh, she is? Okay, all right. But I mean, all of our wives are, are, have, are in ministry uh, been pretty successful in ministry, uh, either work at the church or um, major volunteers at the church. Um, probably came to Christ before we did in some ways of ways of uh, ways or not. How do you deal as the head of a household? How do you deal with a woman with a strong personality? Very carefully. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, so. I, and, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying about my parents. My mom was very strong-willed. Okay. You know, so I actually saw my parents sometimes fighting, mm -hmm. which, again, what you see is what you have. So sometimes when they're fighting, it was loud. Yeah. So the unfortunate thing, when we first got married, well, we fight. I was loud. She wasn't. She actually learned from me how to be loud. <laughs> you know, wow. Like, yeah, really? Really. I would have never figured that one out. No. But it's one of those things where we don't have those moments like we used to. Okay. You know, and, and what I'm getting at is over time you learn to work with each other. But because I had a strong-willed mom, I, I like the idea of having a strong-willed wife. You know, I know that some people think that's crazy. But to me it's like, hey, if you're strong and you want to be with me, then I must be pretty strong. It's almost a confidence thing, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So there's some of that. But even in, in our relationship where Megan's been in a situation where she doesn't feel adequate because of her past, I'm able to try to boost her up. You know, it's like, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you know, the iron sharpening iron type mm -hmm. of thing. We're trying to build each other up. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a plus because whenever I'm not able to do something, I can't lift that weight. Maybe she can. All right, I hear you. And vice I hear versa. You. But I'm asking strong will from the standpoint of altercations. When we have, when you have an okay, altercation, yeah, yeah, yeah. and y'all so, on opposite sides, and right, we're trying, so, we're, we're trying to teach yeah. men or even women, if you have a strong will man, how do you get to the place where, when you're butting heads, you feel like you're strong, you got yeah. a good opinion, and she has one. How do you deal with those moments of, of, of conflict? So, and, and the thing is, personality-wise, I'd rather chew on it and sit back. She wants to resolve it right now. Right now, yeah. So, we are still working those. Okay. <laughs> the yeah. good news is, working those, the things we're working is, why'd you buy that dog food? instead of that dog food. It, it's tiny stuff. Yeah, it yeah. ain't the big stuff. Wow. You know, I mean, it, it, and usually I start that fight. I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, I mean. So it, you're the problem. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but, Megan. He's the problem. <laughs> uh, okay. But, but I think it, it, what we found is that we have, what ends up happening is we have to step away from it mm -hmm. and digest it and come back and say, okay, yeah, that was ridiculous. That was unnecessary. I mean, sometimes when she finds out that she, she may be in the office telling you guys, hey, we got in this fight this morning. No, she so, so, me. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. But, but I think we have but, to come yeah. back to Amos 3. Yeah. We have we, to come back to the cross. Yes. That we have to have that point of agreement because you can't argue with Scripture. Yeah. And we have to Absolutely. get to the place where there has to be some common union where it's not your opinion, it's not my opinion, it is the word of God. 
And when we can get to get there, then it makes it uh, even easier. So in that process, let me let me go to Jonathan now. In that process, when you're dealing not just with uh, anybody that you might be in a relationship with, but when you're dealing with conflict just in general, in general, how do you handle conflict and how do you handle communication when there's when there's major conflict? Uh, man, um, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, uh, man, I like to process things and I try to process it as fast as possible. But sometimes I can't process it fast enough because it's just too much. It's kind of mm -hmm. overbearing. And I don't like to speak out of emotions because if I speak out of emotions, you're not going to get anything good. There's going to be no good results. And so I try to hold my composure as much as I can with any disagreements or any kind of fighting or any kind of really anything with anyone, friends, uh, with my father when we have disagreements. I mean, you know, but I think a lot of it comes from I man having the perspective the right perspective on the person that you're talking to. If I don't have the right perspective on my father or Stephanie or Ben or John or any of my close people or even just anyone, period, I will treat them in a way that is not worthy of their calling. I will treat them in a way that is not worthy of my calling. And if I treat you guys or anyone in such way just because there might be conflict, mm -hmm. because you know everybody's personality is going to rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to get into their feelings, their emotions, and they're going to want to like, ah, nah, you're wrong, nah, you're wrong. Hey man, da, da, da. you know, I've had it. Man, we're good friends, really good friends, people that are literally mm -hmm. laid their life down for me. You know, mm -hmm. hey bro, here's this. Let me help you out with this. Let me help you out with that. We get into conflict. Mm -hmm. Hey man, bro, you hurt my feelings. You hurt my feelings. And I just, I got to tell you that, bro. Oh, man, I'm sorry, bro. Boom. And then we hug it out, bro. Man, I love you, bro. And, and because I love you, I got to tell you this stuff because I don't ever want that to be like something in my heart. And then I treat you a certain way for the rest of my life. I put you at a distance. And then I never actually get to show you love because now what you did to me, I'm holding it in. And the way you're being, I'm holding it in. And the way I'm, so part of, it's, it's kind of like my relationship with God. I am that person that doesn't want to listen to him sometimes. I am that bride that looks at him and say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to listen to you right now. But Lordship. Yeah. And when I realize that and I tend to submit myself when I have a disagreement with anyone else, I can do the same. I can be like, oh, hold on, hold on. Slow down, slow down, because I can, I can make, I can, I can help someone accept their role, or I can make someone deny and reject their role. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, for those of y'all that remember uh, back in the day, Sandman, when he would come up on the stage and pull people off, was uh, Showtime at the Apollo. Sandman then came up and started playing the <laughs> piano. <laughs> Uh, there were some questions that, that we had that we had that we, we definitely wanted to get to. Um, and I'm just going to hit one of them just very quickly because I feel like this, this one is definitely a man. We had questions from the panel. Um, some of them y'all answered last week. But one of them was, um, one that I want to deal with is, is it bad to want time alone? Um, it is not bad to want time alone. It is bad to want isolation. The reality is that what a lot of us term as time alone, we're actually running from communication. We're actually running from conflict. And if you're trying to get alone by yourself just to get away from having to deal with conflict, then you will never resolve the conflict. Last night, Tanya and I, being open and transparent, we had a sit-down meeting because I got so frustrated. I got so frustrated last night that I started literally, big on me was crying. And so I was about to just walk, slap upstairs, and it's amazing we had that moment last night before we doing this panel. 
and uh, my, my, my baby took the, uh, the authoritative role. I said, no, you're not walking upstairs. She said, come sit down. Call my son from his PlayStation, come sit down. And for about an hour, we just, just dealt with some stuff. And it comes a time when you're trying to learn to communicate where you just, you're going to have to face it. Because if you run from it, you will always be running from it. Well, I don't like confrontation. I don't like confrontation. I just can't deal with somebody fussing all the time. You cannot control, I think Jonathan said this, you cannot control how people act towards you. You can control how you act towards them. And you can shift the atmosphere by going back to the Word of God and, and being an adult and sensible about a situation. And when you do that, even when they're acting a fool, then you obligate God to show up concerning his word. He says that when we walk in integrity, up, integrity and uprightness will preserve you. And so you can't control what people do, but you can control what, how, how you with other people. Last one question. I'm going to use one more minute is how do you deal with betrayal? I think they dealt with it last week. People are going to hurt you. And as, hard, as easy as it might be to, for me to say, get over it, get over it. In this life, you're going to have tribulations, but be a good cheer for God has overcome the world. The truth of the matter is you offended Christ and he got over it and died for your sins. So if he got over it, then you get over it. Does that mean you allow them to keep doing the same thing? No. But it does mean that you choose to love in spite of. Amen? Y'all do me a favor and show, it up, show love for our panel. Great job, guy. Thank you. God bless you. How many of you guys received that?